Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included here in the One Duplicant Challenge. In the previous episode we tapped into the hydrogen vents so we have proper power here on Usista. Right now we are still waiting for the water to heat up. The toxin volcano is gonna kick in very soon, helping with the heating up part and then of course we have the hydrogen vent, the 500 degrees that we have to cool down that is gonna contribute to that as well. While we are waiting for this to happen, I would say we are gonna revamp the fish tank so we can actually have many many fish going on. And I think we might come up with a simple design we can take advantage of. For instance, let's uh, maybe get a conveyor loader here on the left side. I also removed the rails right there. What I would like to see rather is a rail going down into this corner piece. And then right down here, we're gonna add a chute. Once the chute is built, we can tile this in like so. And this should still allow us to place an auto sweeper that can actually reach this tile if we add it diagonally. So somewhere along these lines I want my auto sweeper. That means we can get rid of the old auto sweeper and I might even get rid of everything together here. Um, let me think. Maybe we don't really have to change a thing. Well, I guess the next step would be to add a couple of mesh tiles here. And then let me see, under the food section we should have a fish release and also a fish feeder. We don't really need the release because we already have the fishes inside. But we want to add the fish feeder, maybe right there. Inside the fish feeder we're gonna set a balm lily seeds, but I want to disallow manual use. And I think I want to do this for all the types of paku. Balm lily seeds, that's what we're gonna feed them with. Yeah, there's actually a tropical fry egg here, so we do get the different types of fish. Now let's think about the logic for a little bit. I would like to keep one paku inside of the big tank, including an additional egg at maximum. So preferably just one fish, but we cannot risk losing all the fish in this vicinity. We always need to keep one fish, so we're also gonna count one egg. One egg should be safely stored away. However, if that condition is true, that we have enough stuff, as soon as this Paku lays another egg, then one egg should be picked up and brought to the conveyor loader. Then this egg will be brought over here and we can just leave it be. The fish will spawn, they will be very unhappy, but eventually they will die and feed the tree. So technically what we need to achieve is a way to get an egg somewhere where the resulting fish can go back inside the water, but the egg isn't reachable by the same auto sweeper. Let's check something here. If we install a critter sensor in this room, let's try that. Will this count as a room? Ah, I get it. So there are six critters and six eggs at the moment. So I can just detect everything on the planetoid that isn't sealed off. This is actually good news. So instead of going down to the chute directly, we might want to go up first and then go down. This way we can install a secondary chute right here and this is just gonna make sure that we always have an egg on the floor there. So maybe we can even do a little shenanigan like this. So we have a weight plate here. Yeah, maybe we're onto something here. Let me power these guys up. So I would say as soon as we detect anything on the weight plate, so above zero kilograms, no, below zero kilograms, we want to send a green signal. Uh, maybe one kilogram is gonna work. Yeah, now it's green. So as soon as we have an egg on here, it should turn red and shut down the chute. At least that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen right here. And then if that is the case, the chute is gonna shut down and therefore the items are gonna go into the secondary chute. And then in this case, what we want to do is just pick up the critter eggs, right? And we're actually gonna pick up all the critter eggs so we can even drop other types of eggs. Ooh, actually I cannot drop them anymore. Well, I guess technically we don't need these mesh tasks. We can just leave this open for stuff to drop down. And now one egg is right there on the top and the other eggs are going through. So that seems to be working. Oh no, I totally forgot. The auto sweeper picking up the eggs that go into the thing cannot be the same. I can see how this is a problem. Now they're just stuck in an endless loop. So once they are here, they must be unreachable by this auto sweeper. We could have an auto sweeper here on the floor that is just gonna constantly pick up everything. And then instead of the critter sensor, we're gonna actually move this conveyor loader one block up. This should allow me to build the chute here one more block up. Let's reclaim the materials. 
There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if I have an auto sweeper here at the bottom, I can still reach the entirety of the room to pick up anything that's on the floor. No, wait, this doesn't work. I need to move the conveyor loader out of reach of the auto sweeper that is capable of reaching this tile. So if I have it here and the auto sweeper at the bottom, it might work. So I'm going to get rid of these conveyor loaders here and instead we're going to build them a little bit further up. As far up as I can build them, hmm, probably right here is good. I can have a second one and then a third one. I want the middle conveyor loader to go into the chute of the tree and the other one is going to go outside. Let's get this fixed up. This also means we don't need the conveyor loader on the left side. Now I can build a second auto sweeper that is not capable of reaching the lower conveyor loader. That means this conveyor loader is responsible to get the X. Now let me, yeah, let's do this by hopping over the chute first. So a little bridge right there. This is going up to the chute and then back into the same hidey hole. By the way, you mentioned in the comment section the sensor here. I should put this to 50 and I did so. This is gonna make it a little bit quicker to actually heat this up to the proper temperature. It is technically not necessary because I'm coming from the liquid reservoir and therefore all the packets here are evened out at the same temperature. But if we already cool this down at 40 degrees then of course we drop below the 35 that we require for the balm lilies. And so 50 degrees is a much better setting. Okay, now I think we're in a much better position. We should be able to input the critter eggs here. And yes, indeed, we want to input all of them and they will be going through the loop. Of course, the chute is shut down at the moment. So they're going over here and they will remain there because this one here is not able to reach this conveyor loader. So far, so good. Do we need to detect the amount of fish we have in here? Let's think about that. At maximum, we're gonna have two fish in here. And once we have two fish, then the next egg is gonna be dropped on the weight plate. However, we might not want that. Maybe we're gonna add a secondary condition. So if we detect two fish, then we don't want a new egg to drop. So let's put back our critter sensor and we're also gonna need an ant gate, right? We can have those guys right here. We're gonna cut this wire and then one wire goes to the first input slot of the ant gate and the second one right there. And then let me think. We might want to do this with a not gate to make it a little bit easier in terms of logic. So this would then go over here, but I'm not gonna connect it quite yet. So two conditions need to be true for that. The first one is we want to count the critters and if we are above one, we want to send the green signal. The same thing with the weight plate. If we detect something on it, then we want to send a green signal now because we are inverting it right here with the not gate. There we go. So both signals are green, which is perfect. That means we have a red output signal. Now two things can happen. This egg hatches and then the fish moves away. This would then turn off the signal and also reverse the signal. Yeah, that's not actually what we need. What we need is an OR gate, right? Because either we have two fish or we have already an egg. So the AND gate needs to be replaced with an OR gate. Have that right here. Fortunately enough, it has the same layout. And now that is gonna work. If we detect more than one critter, then it's sending a green signal. Well, honestly, the OR gate here is completely unnecessary. We can just connect it all together and then get rid of the OR gate as well. I always forget about that. OR gates are just specific if you want the signal to only go into one direction, but here it doesn't matter. We just want to connect it all together. And if there is a green signal, then it's gonna be red. Now there's one more thing we need to solve and that is the output slot here. So there's one slot that goes to the other world and that is going to be all the materials except for critter eggs and except for the food. Also we definitely don't want to do the balm lily seeds. Yeah, I think that should be good and then the auto sweepers can take care of that. And then the secondary one would be only the edible stuff and that one would be going directly to the tree. Okay, I think that might actually work out. So we only have to take care of the bomb lily seeds that they actually land in here. This actually seems easy enough. We just have to join the loop here, right? And we have to make sure it actually goes into the right direction. So maybe we add a conveyor bridge here. So this can only go into one direction. This seems to be already working. Brought back my copper and then the bomb lily seeds can be picked up. Good. They will be dropping in here and if we get anything else then of course this auto sweeper here is still capable of picking it out and putting it into the other two conveyor loaders. Honestly, I think this might just work out. It's very simple logic, much easier than I first anticipated, but I think it might be totally worth it. 
Oh, check this out. Looks like we already filled up our gas storages. Very interesting. So let's put up another row of these. And maybe for good measurement, we're gonna put up some more. I mean, let's utilize the space of this planetoid, right? I'm just hoping that I have enough materials to place these tiles. Should be okay. And then, of course, we can do something simple by connecting it to all the reservoirs. And then the output slots can go this way. Yeah, and then I guess all the pipes can just meet up right here. As long as they go into the main output here, I'm fine. That looks about right. Now, why aren't you kicking in? Ah, I set it to only kick in at 20%. Interesting. Oh, will you look at that. My bomb lilies are finally starting to grow. So we will be able to feed our fish. I missed the hatching right here as well, but the fish basically just jumped over and now we have one pack of fry in here, which still sends a red signal. So that means as soon as we have this one laying an egg, it should be dropping here and then the second egg will be going to the other eggs. As soon as this guy's first egg is going to hatch, we will have two fish in here of different age. And that means all the eggs are not gonna be accepted either. But as soon as one fish dies, the next egg that will be laid by the new fish is gonna be placed on the weight plate again. I feel like this system might actually work out. Now we just have to make this guy happy. It's a wild baby. But then as soon as we get our first bomb lily harvests, we should be able to provide this guy with seeds and therefore the eggs are gonna be laid much more frequently. Wonderful. I would say with that out of the way, we actually successfully did it. I first anticipated a little bit more work going into this, but apparently we were able to somehow manage that. So this might become a little bit of a shorter episode. I think I might have to fly back again. I don't want to bore you to, to scrap materials. So I will most likely do that off camera. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.